shouting is the master in a vision. Somehow he went back in time, you know. You know, sometimes you went in the meditation, you see the past, yeah? The past master, remember I told you that in meditation maybe you could see Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, yeah? Whoever, maybe your religious uh, uh, faith uh, leader or some other that you don't even know, or Lao Tzu, yeah? Uh, Sikh Guru, yeah? Number of Turkey, yeah. And some of you have seen them, yeah? Okay. Well, it's a lucky event if you can see the past masters. But it's, it's okay if you don't see, yeah? <laughs> All right. Uh, so, this Master Bahaudin, he... He has in in his vision. He saw some of the past master. Yeah, probably they can visit him. Yeah, <laughs> just like uh, can visit uh, me or you sometimes. Yeah. Okay. So he saw them. Those already deceased, actually. Yeah, the past master. So um, when he come back to his uh, real life, you know, in the earthly life again. He had seen some past master in the past, so he came back after he, he saw his visiting group, the, the visiting followers or disciples, he said, oh, I have seen uh, com- and had a companionship with the master of the most ancient times, thought to be long dead. So they were so excited, all excited, you know. Probably these one haven't seen any of those in vision before. So I said, oh, please tell us how they look like. Yeah. So the Master said to the visiting group, set the way your attitude towards the teaching that those uh, ancient Master would have thought you are demons. <laughs> That's very <laughs> strong. <laughs> but it's probably like that. Some some of the, the disciples <laughs> might have been like that. Yeah. And maybe if I ask the ancient master, they probably say something like that <laughs> to some of you. <laughs> Truly, I'm not joking. Some are making suffering so much. Not like not like uh, that person get a knife and stab me in the back or something like that. It's not like that. It's a mental torturing and emotional stress. Very scary. <laughs> if you know what I know, <laughs> you don't want to be a master. <laughs> I'm warning you. I'm telling you the truth. Huh? <laughs> I don't envy a position of the master. It's good to have all this knowledge and wisdom, but oh, when you have to use it, to share it with other people sometimes is a really agonizing. Okay, because remember what we learned yesterday from the other master? Not all disciples or, or followers come for the same reason. Yeah? Many of them come for material gains or physical benefit. Yeah? Understand? Or the rich and fame of this world or anything at all, or just to train you with uh, attention to them, you know. Some even wish uh, the masters who scold them. (laughs) They love all kinds of weird things, yeah. And it's very tiring for any master in that kind of, in that level of consciousness, of spiritual hate, have to come down and accompany this kind of mentality, yeah? like one of those that we mentioned yesterday. And they are not the, among the worst. You understand? They probably seek attention, maybe. They probably went in for wrong purpose, but some are very heavy. Karma, and they don't do anything. They just sit near you, and you feel very, very drained. Okay, now, so that explains why the Master say like that, okay? He, he doesn't mean to be bad or anything. It just Telling, telling the truth, because once you ascend 
to a higher level of consciousness. You see things, my God, you will not know how the people on this planet continue to live their life, you know, and with each other. It's, it's a very strange thing to watch <laughs> from a spiritual higher realm, to watch the human behavior, yeah, uh, and the way how they react to the true teaching of the Master. You know, they feel extremely, uh, how you say, to say very surprised, aghast, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the Buddha's time, the Buddha also mentioned in some of the sutra that uh, the uh, even just the how you say the divas, you know, the god of a lower level from heaven, look down to see human being, the way they eat, the way they act, the way they do things. <laughs> they also shake their head, you know. They cannot understand how human live the way they live. Yeah. Okay. No. And in a case that you have seen them, had you seen them, you know, the ancient masters, you would have considered them quite unsuitable for your company. <laughs> I mean, they're not fit enough to be your friend. <laughs> Understand? Yeah. And then you would not be asking questions about them at all. Do you understand or not? Yeah. How do you understand it? Tell me. Any of you smart guys? Tell me. Quickly. I don't just sit there. Huh? Why? That supposed to be these, uh, the followers of this master have seen these ancient masters. They wouldn't want to even be in their company or ask anything about them. Why is that? I gave you a hint already, no? Hmm? Hey. Don't be too quiet. Well, so the followers wouldn't be interested. They wouldn't be interested. Uh huh. Right, good, good enough. Yeah. Who else? The expectations are different. Yeah, expectations are different. Yeah, cool, cool. Are we getting something. Yeah, what else? Huh? Low level? Who? The masters? <laughs> 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 Tell me, who? Huh? Huh? The, the followers, okay. Who else? Yeah, there are many reasons. They keep telling me. Good, good reason. What else? What? They're not attracted to the high level. They're not attracted. Yes. That's correct, too. Yeah? That's it? No more idea? Huh? The outlook, the outlook of the Master? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Maybe cannot relate? Different culture as well? Yeah, that could be it too. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it could be it. It could be it. But I don't think that is a reason here. Yeah. Because they say that they consider them unsuitable to be in their company. It's something like disdainful, you know? looking down upon those ancient masters. So it must have been those uh, reasons listed above, you know, like the appearance is different, the expectation is different. Yeah, anything else? Because, yeah, the master don't always look the way you want, you know? <laughs> they always paint, uh, you know, one or two saints picture with the hollow around it and sit there serenely, you know? But uh, some master could be, you know, like handicapped even. There was uh, one story uh, in uh, Confucius time. There was one guy who, who, who is kind of handicapped, you know. When he walk around, he hope, you know, he cannot walk because his one of his legs has been uh, deformed or something. But all the women flock to him, want to be his second wife rather than to be at home and be the first wife. And all the men uh, flock to him and want to be his buddies. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. So somebody say to Confucius, why is that? So Confucius say, oh, that man, he's enlightened. And that's why. <laughs> okay? 
And uh, some masters, they don't shave, you know. Some masters, they don't comb their hair, they grow their hair very long, yeah. And some masters, they didn't even bother to cover their body, yeah. Uh, they just wear their birthday suits every day. <laughs> uh, they, uh, well, <laughs> some people still do that in India, even women. Yeah, they call them naga. They train themselves in the art of tumor heat, which is a solar plexus. They activate the solar plexus system from the uh, stomach here, yeah? And then they heat their body with it. So they don't have to wear anything. Um, Sometimes, for the sake of decency, <laughs> for the disciples, <laughs> they put some ash on their body. <laughs> to cover, you know. <laughs> I don't know how much they cover with that. <laughs> but <laughs> there's some cover. You cannot say they're not covered, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and people still flock to see those, you know, poor sadhus. <laughs> yes, because the Indian people, they have no discrimination. You can wear beautiful clothes, be deck yourself with jewelry, diamonds. They, if you are enlightened, they know it. Yeah. But some so naive, even if you say you are enlightened, they would believe you anyway, <laughs> because they're so pure. Yeah? Yeah, they're pure, not because they're stupid. They're just so pure, I told you, that's why. They, they just have this uh, NQ in them, you know? <laughs> they believe all people are good. Yeah. In some of the African countries, they have that tradition too. It just may be lost with the modern civilization or influence from other countries. But actually, the real African tradition is that anyone come to your house, they'll be treated like God, just like the Indian people. Yeah, so that is in India, but I don't advise you to try it here in France, please. Il faut pas faire ça en France, hein? Surtout pas à Paris. <laughs> Never try it in French, and especially in Paris. Please, <laughs> don't say to Master, say that. It's okay if you're enlightened, you wear or not wear, to wear or not to wear, <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> Please don't blame me if the police arrest you <laughs> and throw a blanket on you, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, there are some areas you are allowed to do that. Hmm? some uh, nudist, nudist club, uh, you're allowed to do that. You can walk around all day free of charge. <laughs> and one time I met a couple in, in Spain, you know. I went to visit the house for some reason, yeah. And when I walked in the living room, there, there was a big painting of the man in the Adam suit. <laughs> <laughs> and they were very proudly introduced to me who painted it. <laughs> it's the owner of the house himself. Yeah. And on the other room, there sit Madame. <laughs> in, in the Eve is a mode. <laughs> Eve, you know, Eve's a fashion. Wow. And also proudly presented to me. <laughs> Well, I have to. <laughs> what would you say? You know, I have to say, wow, <laughs> such a beautiful painting. <laughs> I don't comment on detail. <laughs> well, you are laughing, but to them it's natural, you know. Actually, it's a natural state of, of life, but we're so used to with wearing clothes, yeah? Or we're so used to with the monk who wear very scanty clothes or, or different color or different fashion, so that when we see somebody else who supposed to be an enlightened person, you know, who doesn't wear clothes or who wear a different kind of clothes that don't belong to the so-called your imagination, then you feel a little strange, that's all. Yeah? Yes. And these same couple, <laughs> later on, they wrote a... They wrote a a postcard to me. <laughs> With a similar picture. <laughs> On the postcard. <laughs> and a uh, but different background. <laughs> In the supermarket, yeah. 
And they uh, reported to me that they are now been in another certain south of Spain. I forgot the name of it. Oh, it's uh, very near the tip, you know, past Malaga. Oh, it's very hot all year round, huh? So they say, oh, here we, we are in the village, you know. <laughs> Everybody is the same. So you understand what I mean to say. <laughs> they have a village there. They, they said to me, as soon as you get into the, the gate, you can be totally free. <laughs> Everybody go to the post office the way they are when they were born, <laughs> and go to the supermarket also the way they are <laughs> when they were born, <laughs> or before they were born. <laughs> and they say they're extremely happy there. Well, good for them, no? And why not? The main point is that you are happy, yeah. I have also been into such a village one time. <laughs> I told you already, if you remember or not, in America, and because they wanted me to uh, look at a, a bigger place to buy for a Los Angeles center, you know. So they took me into such an area, and uh, they didn't even tell me that is a nudist camp or anything. <laughs> Uh, it's a nice to have a surprise <laughs> now and again. <laughs> Master knows everything anyway. <laughs> oh, why bother telling her? You know, she'd know it in advance. <laughs> yeah. Well, not quite until she just came in the gate and face immediately with a guy <laughs> in, <laughs> in his natural outfit <laughs> right in front of her, larger than life. <laughs> Well, I would appreciate it if I have a little bit more preparation in advance. <laughs> you know? Not like you come in, uh, ring the bell and open the gate, the guy opened the gate. <laughs> you thought you went back in time, you know, in uh, Eden, <laughs> uh, Eden uh, Garden, huh? Okay, nevertheless, I, I collect myself. <laughs> I say, oh, hi, sir. <laughs> Oh, nice weather. <laughs> uh, uh, we're lucky, aren't we? Look, there's no cloud anywhere. <laughs> the sky is completely naked. <laughs> uh, you have to talk, you know, the language, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. <laughs> we're lucky these days. Anyway, and then uh, all kind of children and women, they all, the whole family also, sometime in the other area. Okay, <laughs> just that, just that uh, even for me, I'm not used to it, you know? And when you're not prepared, it's just something different. So Anyway, after a while, we still have to go around and look for the area. Yeah, mm, But uh, it wasn't very ideal for our meditation place, so we didn't come back again. But at least they didn't expect us to do the same, you know. <laughs> In that case, I probably wouldn't know how. <laughs> Maybe take a, a while to get used to with that. So we just uh, go around, you know, the way we are, hmm? undercover. <laughs> All right. In this story, huh? the followers, or maybe just the believers, yeah? They didn't say... Uh, they didn't say disciples here, actually. They say a visiting seekers, I mean the one who come and try to see if the Master is okay, if the teaching is good enough. You know, seekers are seekers. Yeah? Sometimes they come and sometimes they just go. So maybe because of that, they don't know anything about the teaching of the Master yet. Yeah. Therefore, the Master have thought that if those ancient Master, yeah, have opinion <laughs> about this. They would say, oh, these are just demons. How can you teach demons? <laughs> yeah, because, to be honest, it's, it's a true like that. Eh? Some people who call themselves seekers, you know, they belong to this and that, and this uh, group of religion, and they came with full of preconceived ideas about what the Master should look like, or what a Master should wear, how the Master should behave, uh, how the master should speak, and how much, how much the master should eat per day. <laughs> That's also, you know what I mean? 
Like in some tradition, you have to eat only once a day, twice a day. You eat till before noon, or you eat afternoon only, or you don't eat at all, or you eat only in the evening. You know, all kind of rules, regulation that has nothing to do with the actual enlightenment and spiritual level of consciousness. Uh, by now, you would have known, right? Yeah, okay. But don't say, Master, say that and go out, eat all day long and eat a lot. <laughs> it's okay, you eat moderately, yeah? yeah? Eat when you're hungry, when you can, that's the best. Huh? And eat moderately. And don't wait until you're starving, you know, keep waiting. Say, oh, Master, say we should not eat too much, so keep waiting, waiting until you collapse. <laughs> and then eat a lot and then maybe you die of overeating. Yeah. Everything... Moderate is the best. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Yeah, because the truth is so obvious. Yeah. But how come? How come many people don't understand? You see what I mean? So obvious. It's like the hand. My hand. So obvious. Eh? That's why the master of the other story yesterday I told you that he tell the disciples to smell the rose and describe it. And they all say all kind of nonsense. Yeah, Mr. Mark. And whoever say, it's a rose, <laughs> can stay and learn with him. It's just a parable, yeah? But it's also uh, really point to a truth, no? That sometimes our mind is so complicated that we miss the point. That we miss the point. That's the problem. Eh? We miss the point. <sighs> and we uh, do things complicated way, we think in a complicated way, we talk in a complicated way, and we complicate our world a lot. Complicated each other. Yeah? The ancient master thought of these people as demons. It seems a very uh, strong word, you know? But actually, I cannot find any better word for it. How else would they be able to? nail Jesus on the cross. Eh? How else would they be able to uh, try to assassinate the Buddha many times? How else would they be able to harass, uh, you know, Prophet Muhammad and his followers uh, when they were still alive? And many, you know, similar, not as bad, but also harassing the true seeker, the true practitioners, in our time also. Yeah, understand me? And now it's better already. I'm so glad. But in the beginning, it was also very difficult. Not like killing, but, you know, mentally, uh, how you say, uh, the mental endurance at that time for us was very difficult too. Yeah? Okay. Because people misunderstand a lot. And they have so many ideas about how the truth should be, what the master should be, and oh, so many, no end of this expectation. So it is correct that you say the expectation is different, yeah. And also a low level is also correct. And what else did you say? What else some of you say? Huh? Another culture, yeah. That's properly also, yes. Yes, as I told you already. If you met a master, maybe he's enlightened, and he's completely naked standing in front of you. Maybe you would be a little taken aback, no? Or maybe you really want to seek the truth, but it's too much truth in front of you. <laughs> too much truth at one time, you know. So, <laughs> it's difficult. And the master just behaves the way a master behaves, you know, whatever he or she likes. Because they're natural, you know? They're simple. They don't even think complicated. If I wear like this, what would people think? If I do like this, what would people think? Most of the time, they don't. Yeah? They became as like a child, very simple, natural. They do what they do and finished. Yeah? But sometimes, because of so many hit back, you know, from the disciples or from the followers or from the outsiders, that the Master may be saying, Oh, really? Okay, okay, then I don't do that. <laughs> okay, then I won't do that. Um, I remember a story about San Francis. 
the one who, who took his trousers and gave it to the poor? Who was it? San Francisco? San Francisco. Yeah, San Francisco. Yeah, okay. This San Francisco in English, ne? Okay. One day, he is famous for being very loving and kind and, and always giving. But what can a monk give, you know, at least whatever he has, ne? So one day he has nothing. And a poor guy uh, standing on the street have no clothes to wear, yeah, or very started clothes and cold. So he took off his clothes and gave it to, give it to that guy, and and walk back home, you know, natural, <laughs> in a natural way. And everybody just call him so much. Why did you do that? It's very indecent, huh? You you are completely naked and walking on the street and go back to our monastery like this. It's indecent. It's uh, offensive. And he was thinking, is this really o- offensive? <laughs> is this indecent? He was really completely unaware of the so-called indecency or the offensiveness of his, uh, you know, natural unclothed body. Yeah. Such is the state of some master, you know? They do what they do, they just don't think so much like that. Yeah? They don't mean anything to offend anybody. They just live one moment, you know, each moment the way they do it, yeah? According to the will of heaven, according to whatever has to happen, it happens. That's it, yeah. But uh, because we are complicated human <laughs> brain, we've been taught differently. We've been exposed to so many different customs and expectations and rules and regulations. Then when we see something different from our culture, are different from our expectation, we will repose it, you know, we uh, reveal it, you know, like a reject it, or even uh, condemned. Yeah? You understand me? Yeah, okay. So therefore, the Master say like that. And it's not just about the appearance of the Master, also the teaching, also, you see? Because we learn too much from the so-called... Um, teaching, you know, and we fix on one sentence or one page, and we don't see the whole thing even, yeah? We don't see the whole thing. And even we read the whole scripture, sometimes we don't understand, yeah? How many people understand the Bible, yeah? When inside it says that, thou shalt not eat meat, thou shalt not kill. Understand me? Yeah. Shall not drink wine and not, not... not even be among the wine drinker and the meat eater. How many people understand that? Tell me. Huh? Not many, yeah? And the Buddhist sutra say, whoever, the Buddha say, whoever eat meat from now on, they are not my disciples. Even so strongly like that. Still how many people understand that? Tell me. Hmm? Very few. And let alone even practice in it, Yeah? don't understand or don't want to understand and don't practice it. And then somebody else do understand, do want to understand and do practice it. They look different. Hmm? How come you're not like me? It's not possible, <laughs> you know? And they put uh, even fish in Jesus' mouth. Yeah. The ancient, uh, now they found the ancient uh, writing, it's even say he didn't even uh, give fish. He give bread, yeah. And then in other in other uh, places, you also see say he broke bread, you know. So that should have been that his tradition always broke the bread, and then share it among the people, just like we do here sometimes, yeah. I broke a piece of chocolate or something and give to all of you, yeah. And we don't just break bread, yeah. We break chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> We break cakes, <laughs> we break cookies, yeah? It's just a symbolic of sharing our love and whatever we have together, no? Yeah. So, but in the ancient time, maybe they don't have chocolate, mm-hmm. they don't have uh, cookies, <laughs> not handy all the time. So the tradition over there, hey, you now you think about it. <laughs> I get the hint, I get the hint. <laughs> I get the hint. <laughs> Okay, but you listen first, okay? I broke the bread and I leave it here. You're not going to have it yet. I got the hint, but 
You have to listen first, okay? <laughs> you can't you can't listen when you're eating or they just go crunchy, crack, crack in your mouth and it interfere with your hearing. Yeah? All right. And we shall have it. No need to push me. <laughs> Didn't you eat enough all these days, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, like it. All right. So now we all understood, eh? We understand each other why the ancient master uh, would think of uh, some of the seekers as demons because of their attitude, you know? They came sometimes with an aggressiveness. They call themselves seekers, but they came already full of you know, uh, <laughs> I w- want to say crap, but I wouldn't. <laughs> Full of uh, preconceived ideas, yeah? And then want to go there just to attack the Master and his teaching, or her teaching. Look here, you know, I read in the Bible, it's like this. I read in the uh, Bhagavad Gita, it's like that. I read in the uh, Surah Ganma, it's like that. They miss all the points that they should read. They just get one sentence, which they don't understand anyway, or one page or one paragraph, which they don't ever understand, and throw it on the Master and the, all the believers or the teaching of the Master. You understand me? Yeah. And that is not too bad already. But they come to the extreme that to kill the Master even, like in the case of Jesus or other Sikh gurus or... Prophet Muhammad uh, or his, uh, you know, they want to, ask, uh, to kill them, and his uh, followers, for example, like that. And many more in the history of humankind that uh, human just, you know, harass, prosecuted, and kill the master. Yeah, sometimes, or oftentimes. Uh, these days we are really lucky, huh? Maybe. <laughs> this day cannot kill a master. Yeah, okay. Hmm. So, but there are many other ways to, you know, to make the master trouble. Killing is not the worst, really. It's just also the way how they kill also is horrible. Understand me? But never mind. Don't blame anybody. It's just the collective karma of the low consciousness. And that's why the master, knowing all the risk and the danger, still coming down here from the glorious state of their oneness with God, to come here to be one with humankind, to be what they are, to do what they do, and in order to teach them, to lead them back to their original great self. Yeah. For that, many masters have sacrificed their, not just their physical life, their spiritual state, yeah? Because once they come down here, they also became low. It's not like they're born and they realize immediately that they're a master. Maybe they did when they were young, you know, when they were first born. But after a while, like everyone else, everything cover, cover, cover. The more grow up, the more cover, yeah? That's, that is the law of this physical universe. Ah, okay. Any question at all? about the ancient master, because here he said that you wouldn't want to ask anything about the ancient master if you've seen them. <laughs> it's, it could be true, eh? Yeah. Many masters, they, they don't look the way they expect, huh? Hmm. Even if they come here now, you know, many people wouldn't recognize them. Yeah, many times they already ask many questions, you know. They expect Jesus <laughs> to come down or... Uh, whatever, the Bodhisattva look like this, like that. Yeah. Okay, tell me. Any question? Hello? No question, really? No comment. Comment. You're so enlightened, you don't need question, but comment. <laughs> <laughs> Say something. Did you learn something from it? Tell me, what? Actually, it's so obvious already, I know that, but tell me what you think. Mostly, mostly the master behaves just naturally, you know, appropriately. It just, just some people <laughs> want the master to look in the frame, you know, the way they, they, 
like a painted picture, always like this. Okay. Like robot, you know. Good boy, good, good. <laughs> I had a conversation with a friend of me. Yeah. He said, like, um, I was talking about Jesus, that the people were very discriminating because of how he looks and Yes. That they didn't accept the master because of how he was looking. Yes. And I was saying, and he was criticizing these people of that time. Yes. And I said, but you are doing the same. Because yeah. you accept Jesus, you accept the master to look like Jesus now. Ah, uh, okay. And when she is not looking like Jesus, you don't understand that Jesus is back and you yeah. don't appreciate them. Ah, uh, yeah. You see? <laughs> you are doing the same. Yes, yeah, doing the same. Same at the time of Jesus. Two thousand years ago. Nothing, uh, nothing changed. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I suppose I should grow up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not difficult, is it? I mean, nowadays... <laughs> Nowadays we even have surgery, right? <laughs> Can change men into women, women into men. Wow, very very easy. Okay, the hair part is not easy. It's not uh, difficult. He has long hair. I have one. <laughs> the other part uh, we have to consider about that. <laughs> and the bear is also easy to grow. You know, you just put some some kind of medication, no? Huh? The people who don't grow any bear and they feel they are not macho enough, they buy some of the medication and they put it on to grow more bear, right? Yeah? Are there such things, right? I heard. You can, you can grow more bear if, if you put it on. So I could, could try, you know? <laughs> oh, it's easy like this, you know, because uh, we can wear fake beer, you know? Like you put on a tape and you tape it on. And after the work is done, you go home, sleep, you take it off. It's maybe easier. Then I can be both, no? When I go out, I wear a long beard, you know, flowing and white or whatever. Or a little bit. No, Jesus didn't have a long flowing beard, right? Because he was still young when he died. So it just, you know, grow a little bit, or two inches is fine. <laughs> yeah. My goodness, huh? Did you? Did any of you feel like you are Jesus or something when you were in Jerusalem? Did you feel any of that influence? Huh? Some people went there and they feel like they are Jesus. Did you? Did any of you feel like that there? You did. Oh, he is very near, but okay, that's different. Nobody else. I, I was really under that influence. Yeah, I feel definitely I I was Jesus. <laughs> I was so happy. <laughs> I am coming home. You know, I didn't like the last part. You know, the crucifixion part. But I liked the part that I was Jesus. I felt very good, very confident. Yeah, they say many people go there and had that kind of feeling. I definitely did. Yeah, I can tell you that really they make you feel like that, make you feel like you are Jesus. Not just feel like I am, you know. <laughs> I have been, I was Jesus. Feel like that. It's definite, you know. It's not just a feeling. So, uh, watch it, huh? If you haven't felt yet, maybe you should go back there and uh, check it out again. <laughs> maybe you were too busy to feel. I was busy too. How come that? It just came over me, you know. Like I came home. Mm. Like I was truly Jesus. There's no doubt at that moment. You know what I mean? Not like, okay, I'm feeling it. <laughs> I just feel like I relieve again, you know. Okay. Yeah. All right, so no more comments, huh? Yeah, good comment, maybe a little bit good. Anybody else? Huh? No? Uh, it's another surprise for you, okay? I thought the book, uh, the joke is finished, but somebody brought me some more <laughs> to work. So let's have uh, laugh it all off, eh? <laughs> okay. A man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what else to do? 
<laughs> Who else? <laughs> a man stood at the the tea, checking his shot for what seemed an eternity. You know, um, in the golf course. Yeah, he's standing in front of his tea and just checking, checking, and trying and uh, attempting to, but didn't didn't shoot. Yeah. Uh, so one of the expert partner, you know, his friend say, "What takes you so long? Just hit the ball, man." <laughs> so the guy say, "My wife is up there watching me from the clubhouse. I want to make this a perfect shot." So the other guy said, don't worry, you have no chance to hit her from here. <laughs> Man, huh? A very famous uh, lecturer, yeah, and his uh, chauffeur were talking another one day when we are, when they are on the way to a lecture hall. And the driver said to the lecturer, professor, you know, I said, you know, I heard you many times on the back seat, you know, over this lecture already. I bet I could uh, read it as good as you do, yeah, uh, in the lecture hall. So the professor said, I bet you cannot. And uh, the, the driver said, I can. Yeah. I cannot, I can, cannot, can. <laughs> okay, okay, I let you try, yeah. Mm, you better be good. So they exchanged clothes, and he wear a cap <laughs> and the glove, and the other guy wear the professor's clothes, and went up the stage and delivered the lecture. Ah, perfect, flawless. Everybody clap, 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 and very, very happy. But just uh, to make himself, uh, uh, to get himself more attention, one of the professor, another professor, you know, in the audience, and stood up and asked a question. You know, that wasn't really necessary question at all. He just want people to know that he 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 does have some opinion. Okay, so he asked a question. Yeah, something mm. because he want to uh, impress other people. You know, maybe a young girlfriend or something or some students nearby. And then the driver, you know, in the form of the professor on the stage, said, Ah, such a low level and lousy question. Even my chauffeur can answer it. Come here. (laughs) 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 Uh, There was a man (laughs) again. Who has a dog? Who had a dog? And he wanted to train him, but he could not succeed. So he was so tired and fed up already. Yeah. Uh, one day he went to the church, you know, and to meet a very nice, uh, you know, powerful priest of evangelist church. And he was telling him about his problem. He could not train his dog. So the evangelist priest said to him. Oh, okay, bring him to me. I will train him in no time. Well, the man has a little doubt, but uh, okay, why not? He lose nothing since he couldn't train him anyway. So I brought the dog there to the, the priest. And after a while, he, he asked, you know, after a few days, he asked the evangelist church, how is it going? You know, is his dog been training? And he said, ah, come along to my church, I'll show you, okay? And then when the man was there, the dog, so-called dog owner, when they, the priest pick up a, a stick and throw it far and say, fetch! Yeah. <laughs> the dog run along, go fetch, and then bring it right in front of the priest and standing there. And the priest said, drop it! And he dropped right in front of him. Oh, he's very impressed. You know, the man was very impressed. Yeah. And then so the, the owner said, oh, you know, they keep trying like roll over, drop dead, <laughs> all kind of thing, you know. Uh, wag your tail, turn around. You know. Oh, he did all that. So the, uh, the the owner, so-called owner of the dog, was very excited. He said, can I try? Yeah. And the, the priest said, of course, go ahead. Okay. So the, the, the owner of the dog said, here, you know what the word is? Okay, when you have a dog, you train 
uh, in American and uh, America anyway. When I train my dog, I say heel. That means he walk alongside of me, not faster, not slower than me. Walk alongside with or without leash. In the beginning, with leash you train him. Afterward, you throw the leash out. He's still heel next to you. Heel means follow my heel. Yeah. Okay. So when the dog owner say heel, uh, the the dog uh, the dog lift up uh, one paw and place it on his the man and say, "Thou shalt be healed." <laughs> <laughs> I command the sickness to go away. <laughs> Evangelist church. <laughs> oh, the church style, eh? <laughs> Heal is the H E E L, but also sound like healing, you know? And the priest, they, <laughs> they train the dog to heal, <laughs> just like they do it. Or maybe he's seen the dog, the priest do it, and he did it himself. Yeah. yeah, my dog, they, they don't need to be trained nothing. Like happy, you know, uh, because sometimes I separate them, you know, after eating or just when I'm not there so that they rest. Because after eating, if they playing with each other too much, they might get upset stomach and throw out, you know. Some of the dogs like, are sensitive, like Hamid, and happy and Hamid love to play rolling on the floor with each other, chasing around the pot or whatever, you know, tugging. <laughs> So after eating some time or some, some, so for some reason, sometimes I, I separate, yeah? And, uh, or sometimes I'm cooking, you know? I don't want them always run around chasing each other under my feet, you know, <laughs> because sometimes it's not safe for them because I have like a hot pan of oil or boiling water and I'm bringing from uh, uh, the stove, the, the fireplace, to the table, even a bowl of soup, you know? So only after I cook, oh, I just let a few dogs out, and, you know, the peaceful one, <laughs> not the chasing around and playing all over the place. So, and I let Happy inside and Hermit outside, so they don't chase each other. Because sometimes after they eat, but I'm cooking, you know. So she just saw me open the door every day, how? She just open and come out, you know put a paw on the handle, push it down, and come out like nothing. And that door, I tell you, is very sticky. Even I sometimes need to, to, to kick it to open, you know. Or she, I don't know, she always come out. Yeah, and later we saw her just put a paw on the handle, push it down, and use her big body, bang. <laughs> out she come. Here I am. <laughs> you can't contain me in that room. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So, if you have love for dogs, they respond, they understand everything you said. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, well, I couldn't demonstrate now, but, you know, like my assistant, uh, they don't believe they understand it. They do. Like Hermit, if he lay across my, my, my lap, you know, yeah, he's a lap dog, believe it. So big, but still a lap dog. He loves to lay on the lap. Fine, I bear it. And his head is turned toward his side. And somehow, if I want him to turn this side, I turn around him, then he turns immediately. Yeah, any time. And they all do that. Yeah. But Hermit is uh, is very attentive, more smart. Yeah. Okay. Smarter than some of them. Or some of them, they pretend they don't understand. They're lazy, you know. Well, what's the big deal? Head here, head there. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> so don't want to listen. Yeah. But like uh, Goody, you know, he's whenever he, you come in, you know, if you're a family member or if he likes you, of course he bring your slippers, you know. Oh, he, if he doesn't have your slipper, he bring my slipper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, any toy or something, you know. Sometimes it happened to be my remote control, you know. <laughs> Full of drool of love, you yeah. know. So, of course, I have to tell him, drop it. And then he dropped right away, you know. But you have to clean it. <laughs> it's very slippery. If you want number two channel, it will become number four. <laughs> it's the drool. Okay. All right. It's another joke here. A little girl, uh, you know, in her Sunday suit, was running as fast as she could because she doesn't want to be late for her Bible class. So she was running and praying at the same time. 
Oh, dear Lord, please don't let me be late. Don't let me be late. And as she was running and praying, she didn't pay attention. She stumbled, you know, and fell, and all her cl- uh, clothes become muddy and dirty. So he, he, uh, she got up and was shaking it a little bit and then started running again and said, Oh, dear Lord, please don't let me be late, but don't push me either. <laughs> <laughs> There was a a guy, you know, a painter, you know, do painting, repairing, but he's very, uh, how you say, business-minded, you know, so he always uh, thinning the paint so that it it lasts longer, you know, it goes longer and cheaper, but he charged the same. Uh, One day he went to the church to do the painting for the church, and and still he did the same habit, you know. Mm. but then, uh, because he was doing it, and then suddenly there was a uh, thunder, you know, that hit his uh, uh, ladder and throw him up on the floor. And every other painting and everything, even the new paint he did, all wash off. And then there was a noise, a voice from heaven saying, Repaint! Repaint! <laughs> Sin no more! <laughs> Sin no more! <laughs> Like repaint, repaint, huh? Repent, repent, (laughs) sin no more, (laughs) sin no more. (laughs) A churchgoer asked his minister, "Is it good for a man to profit from another man's mistakes?" So the the minister say, "Of course not." You know. So the churchgoer say, "Are you absolutely certain?" Not really a church go, he just belonged to the church. He don't even go to church too much. So the priest said, Absolutely, my son. What's the question? Yeah. So okay, in that case, would you please return twenty five dollars I gave you after my wedding last year? <laughs> it's a mistake to marry <laughs> to return the money. <laughs> Another man. <laughs> man uh, go to see his rabbi. Uh, rabbi, something terrible is happening, and I have to talk to you. The rabbi asked, What's wrong? The man said, My wife is poisoning me. So the rabbi was surprised and said, How is it possible? Are you sure? The man said, Yes, yes, I'm telling you. It's the truth. What should I do? She's really poisoning me. So the rabbi said, Okay, okay, um, hang on in there. I, I have to talk to your wife first to see what's going on. So after that, uh, then the, he called the, the rabbi, yeah, called the man and said, Hey, look, listen, I have talked to, to your wife over the phone for four hours. I think uh, if you want my advice, I say, Just take the poison. <laughs> A man arrives, you know, at the heaven gate, and St. Peter asks, Religion? Man says, Methodist. Okay. St. Peter looked down on the list and say, Go to room 24, but be quiet as you pass room tw- uh, number 8. Okay. Another man arrives in heaven, and St. Peter asks again, Religion? <laughs> uh, Baptist. Okay, go to room 18, but be quiet when you pass number 8. Okay. Another guy come, and St. Peter asks again, Religion? He say, in Jewish. I'll go to room number 11, but be quiet when you pass number 8. So a man say, Okay, sir, he been observed in all this, you know, while in queue. He say, I can understand that we... Uh, have different room for different religions, but why must we be quiet when we pass the room number eight? So Saint Peter say, "Well, the Catholics are in room number eight, and they think they are the only ones here." <laughs> so, an elderly nun uh, was uh, feeling ill, you know. She's old now, and it's almost time to go. 
So her doctor prescribed to her uh, like a little whiskey every day to calm her down, relax her. That's supposed to be, you know, doctor, I was like, whatever. However, because she doesn't want to be uh, lured into a worldly temptation, so she declined. She never drank it. But the mother superior know that uh, this sister, you know, the dying sister, she loves milk. So she said, okay, put the whiskey in the milk. <laughs> So, okay, she drank it every day. She didn't think of anything. But, uh, you know, eventually she has to go. All the sisters gathering around her and say, uh, is there any last word of wisdom she would like to share with them? You know, the younger one. She said, oh, never sell that cow. <laughs> A good cow. <laughs> I'm telling you. Temptation go different under if different form, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, truly like that, you know? And we are laughing, but sometimes things are like that in this world, you know? Like we want to be vegan, yeah. But sometimes we, uh, people want to have a little cookie and something. They always put milk in it, you know? Or a lot of them put eggs in it. Or what kind of it? And it's very difficult for any of you to find a true vegan food, eh? Okay, so if you had to and you're nearly dying, <laughs> take a little cookie. <laughs> Just a little bit, okay? One percent of milk in it. Uh, I don't really like it very much. Oh, bake your own cookie is the best, okay? Yeah. In the Chinese shop, they sell those small round cookies in a small jar. They're completely vegan. No milk, no egg, nothing. Yeah, very nice. A round one, you know, about about the size of this button. Yeah, exactly like that. Each cookie is like that. Yeah, and have sesame on it, or it's made with jam, or made with sesame powder, sometimes almonds. It's very nice, okay? Chinese shop, mostly they sell things. They do sell all kinds of things, you know, non-vegan, non-vegetarian too, but if they do sell, there's some nice cake, yeah? Or some, uh, those are soft cakes, yeah? Green color, white color with coconut in between, coconut milk, something like that. They're very nice, completely vegan, okay? They look like milk, but they're coconut milk. Yeah, very nice, okay? Only if you have any Chinese shop in your vicinity, otherwise you think about it, also fine. <laughs> 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 Better than nothing. <laughs> we, our purity consists of, you know, body, speech, and mind, right? So you shouldn't think in, in a bad way. You shouldn't do anything bad, and you shouldn't even speak bad. So thinking is one of the <laughs> process, you know? You know? So if you're thinking about cookies, maybe it's, <laughs> it's a help somehow. <laughs> there was a guy, a man, yeah. Uh, he went out fishing, yeah. And then uh, his boat was attacked by the Loch Ness monster. <laughs> <laughs> and he, the, the monster flipped his boat, you know, in the air and then swallowed both the boat and the man, you know. In, in the verse of waiting to swallow, you know, open his mouth, waiting. And then at that time, uh, the, the man prayed to God, Oh, please, God, please help me. And then suddenly everything froze, you know, freeze in midair. You know, the boat and the man stopped there, and the Loch Ness Monster man, uh, mouth just hold there, and nothing happened. And he heard something, you know, he heard something from, from above saying, I thought you didn't believe me before. <laughs> He's an atheist, you know. So the man said, oh, give me a break. Uh, a few seconds ago, I also didn't believe a Loch Ness Monster exists. <laughs> they all exist, all right. Uh, there's a priest, a minister, I don't know what's the difference. Yeah. And a guru, I don't know what the difference, <laughs> unless they're enlightened. Eh? They are sitting together and discuss the best positions for prayer. You know what I mean, right? Like Buddhists, they tell you how to to bow to the Buddha in which way, and uh, you know, in the church sometimes there's a certain fashion to pray, you know, to the Lord. Some, you know, some uh, they, they 
denomination, huh? They do that. Okay, so they were discussing which position is the best for prayer. And then uh, there was a tele- telephone man who was working nearby, repairing the telephone for them. And uh, the priest said to all of them, to the other two, kneeling, kneeling, you know, on your knees, is uh, definitely the best way to pray. No, the minister say. I get the best results standing with my hands outstretched to heaven. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The guru say, you are both wrong. <laughs> the most effective prayer position is laying down flat on the floor. <laughs> so the telephone repairman interrupt and say, excuse me. Sirs, but the best praying I ever did was when I was hanging upside down from a telegraph pole. (laughs) I'm sure that's the most sincere. (laughs) And so he he got saved, so I think that's the most effective way. A Briton, a Frenchman, and a citizen Khan of some dictator's country. <laughs> I don't want to mention the name, okay? <laughs> they changed already, so I don't want to mention it. In the old era, you know? Uh, they are viewing a painting of Adam and Eve uh, playing in the Garden of Eden. Uh, the Brits say, Look at their reserve and their calm. They must be British. <laughs> <laughs> So the friends say, nonsense, they are naked and so beautiful. Clearly, they are (laughs) French. So the citizen Khan from the dictator's country say, no clothes, no shelters, only one apple to eat. They are, (laughs) and they are being told that this is paradise. They must belong to our country. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't want to mention it. It sounds so racist, so I didn't say it. <laughs> you know, some countries don't like the other country, and the capitalists don't like the communists, and vice versa, and they make jokes at each other, and we don't want to join in. Okay, so I just changed the country's name. Yeah. <sighs> One morning, a man... <laughs> came into the church on crutches, yeah? yeah? He stopped in front of the holy water. You know, in the church they have a, a basin, there's a holy water. You come in, you're so, supposed to put your hand in it, you know? Make the cross sign, you know, and then go inside. Yeah. So the man with the crutches go in there, uh, put the water from the holy water on both of his legs and throw away both crutches. Yeah. So the, the the altar boy, you know, oh, running quickly when he saw that, he went to the priest and tell him whatever happened. And the priest said, son, you have just witnessed the miracles. So where is the man now? He said he's uh, laying flat next to the water. <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> what else do you expect? <laughs> don't ever try your Lord, <laughs> the Lord your God, no? Say The Bible says, don't ever try the Lord your God. Hmm. Oh, this is a bad joke, but it's okay. <laughs> a panda, you know, supposed to be a panda, walks into a restaurant, sit down and orders a sandwich. And he eats the sandwich, then pulls out a gun, shoots the waiter dead. And the panda stand up to leave. The manager shouts, Hey, where are you going? You just shot my waiter and you didn't pay for sandwich. So the panda yelled back while going away, Hey, I'm a panda. You can look it up in the internet, see who I am. So the manager opened <laughs> computer and look, What does it say? You know, one of the customers asked, what does it say about panda there? The the boss, you know, of the restaurant read, Panda is a tree dwelling, a uh, marsupial of Asian origin, 
characterized by distinct black and white coloring. Eat, shoot, and live. <laughs> 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 you should <shouldn't> live. <laughs> I told you it's not a good joke, but never mind. It's a joke still. <laughs> he eats shoots and lives, no? <laughs> you know what a farm hand is? The handyman who help help in the farm. He goes to the doctor with a broken leg. Yeah. And uh, the doctor asks him, Oh, what happened? So the farmhand begin, Oh, well, doctor, uh, 25 years ago. And the doctor said, Never mind the past. Just tell me uh, why you broke your leg this morning. So the farmhand continue again. Well, 25 years ago, <laughs> uh, I first started working on the farm. And then right after I gone to bed that night, the farmer's beautiful, sexy daughter came to my room. She asked me if there was anything I wanted. I said, no, everything is fine. And then she asked again, are you sure about that? And I said, I'm sure. And then she asked again, isn't there really nothing I can do for you? Anything I can do at all for you? <laughs> and then I said, I reckon not. <laughs> And the doctor was getting impatient. Said, Excuse me, what does this story have to do with your broken leg? So the man, the hen, the farm hand say, Well, this morning I just realized what she meant, and I <laughs> fell off the roof. <laughs> man, huh? <laughs> it took so long. <laughs> he didn't need nothing. <laughs> Uh, a teenager who has just received a permit to drive, you know, first time. So she drove the parents to the church. You know, it was a hair-raising, <laughs> goose-bumping <laughs> ride <laughs> from the house to the church with that teenager, you know, <laughs> first time driving. Okay, so after they <laughs> finally arrived at the church, the mother got out... <sighs> Thank you. And the daughter say, Any time. <laughs> so he say, she slammed the mother slammed the door and say, I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> she thank God to still alive. <laughs> a staff manager was interviewing a blonde for an assistant position. Well, they make fun of the blonde again. Uh, here, I dye my hair, so <laughs> we're in the same boat. Uh, and he wanted to find out a little more about her personality. So he asked her something like, if you could have a conversation with anyone at all, alive or dead, you know, if you have a choice to speak to anyone right now, dead or alive, what, who would that be? She said, well, I would think I would choose the living one, no? <laughs> Don't understand, huh? Yeah? You got it? Why didn't you laugh at all? <laughs> no. She mean any famous person or anything, you know. She just says the living one. <laughs> a man and a wife celebrating their 50 years anniversary. And the husband brought her a very uh, expensive, you know, 250 dollars she threw night gown night gown for her and uh, later she got ready to bed and she realized that she had forgot her night gown she didn't open it it's still in the box downstairs so she went downstairs passing him you know to try to get the the night uh, nighty yeah and the man was looking at it and like my god for 250 dollars I think they could have at least iron it, no? <laughs> the wife said to the husband, You know, somebody actually complimented me on my driving today. The husband said, ah, How? She said, they, Somebody left uh, a note on the window screen. It said, Parking fine. <laughs> 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 it 
<laughs> it's nice, nice, huh? <laughs> yeah, parking is always difficult sometimes, especially in a tight spot, you know. So if somebody said to you like that, feel good, huh? Mm. Okay, a reporter uh, went to Israel to cover the, f- the fighting, and she's looking for something emotional and positive and human interested, interesting. So something like that guy in uh, Sarajevo who risked his life to play the cello every day in the town square. <laughs> I don't know why they say that, but never mind. In Jerusalem, she heard about an old man who had been going to Welling War to pray every day, two times, even rain or shine, you know? Rain or shy. You know, in uh, Israel they have a war. You go there to to pray. You know, they call it welling war. Huh? Okay. And she went to check him out. So uh, at the welling war, she saw there he is there. So she come and uh, watch him. And after about forty five minutes, uh, then he turned to leave. Then she approached him and then want to interview him. He uh, she introduced herself. Yeah. Elizabeth uh, Dolly, yeah, from a CRAB uh, News Network. <laughs> CRAB News Network. Oh, some uh, CNN, some uh, CBC, some uh, CBBS. And this is CRAB <laughs> News Network. So, uh, how long have you been coming to the Welling War and praying? For about 50 years, he said. What do you pray for? I pray for peace between the Jews and the Arabs, for all the hatred to stop, for all the children to grow up in safety and friendship. (sighs) The reporter asked, And how do you feel after doing this for 50 years? The old man said, I feel like I have been talking to a war. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what else? <laughs> this is about, let's say something about a stingy man, eh? Yeah. They name a certain profession here, but I don't want it. Yeah. And not all lawyers are bad, and, you know, for example, like that, you know, I don't like to everybody picking up on one profession all the time. It will become like a... Like uh, expected uh, reputation, it's no good, is it? Yeah. Okay. So, or not all people are bad. Not all people in certain profession are bad. You know, there are bad and good people everywhere. Okay. So here is a joke. I change it. Okay. A certain stingy man live in a certain village. Yeah. So, and the local charity uh, have uh, realized that. Uh, uh, this man has never contributed anything to their charity organization. So they uh, decided yeah, to go to his house and ask him to contribute something. So they, uh, he came and talked to that uh, stingy man, and he said, stingy, wealthy man, you know. So our research has shown that uh, out of your yearly income, you have not given a single penny to charity, wouldn't you like to give back to the community in some way, sir? The manager asked. So the, uh, you know, stingy, wealthy man say, uh, thinking for a while, and say, first, did you research also show that my mother is dying after a long illness and has medical bills that are several times her annual income? Uh, the charity manager feel a little taken aback and shy, uh, embarrassed, and said, mm, uh, sorry, no, we didn't know that. So the stingy man continued, or that my brother, a disabled veteran, is blind and confined to a wheelchair. And uh, the manager by now is feeling very stricken, you know, and uh, stammer an apology. But he was interrupted and said, or... Oh, Did you know that my sister's husband died in a traffic accident and leaving her penniless with three children? Oh, he feel very humiliated and 
helpless now. The charity, you know, manager, uh, organization manager. So he completely feeling hopeless. So he said, I, I, I uh, had no idea, sir. And uh, the, the stingy man, uh, you know, pounding on him again. Yeah. So if I don't give money to any of them, why should I give it to you? Oh my God! <laughs> oh, you can say it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were thinking of something, right? We all think that okay, because he's busy, he has no money anymore because he has to help his family like that. Oh, they are really this punch like or even punch me in the face. <laughs> A man walked into the doctor's. He said, "Doctor." Doc, I have hurt my arm in several places. So the doctor said, well, don't go there anymore. (laughs) 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 And God made man first. (laughs) I think think the men also enjoy making fun of themselves. At least they have humor and humility, you know. There's a certain country uh, experienced the worst air disaster ever. Yeah, in the morning when two small two seater two seater a coupe eh? two seater Cessna plane crashed into a cemetery. Uh, the search, a special search and rescue workers have recovered 526 bodies. <laughs> <laughs> And the number is climbing as they continue to the <laughs> That's a really good one. <laughs> the man go uh, sitting at the bar looking at this he drink and just staring at it for about half an hour. And then uh, suddenly a big trouble making drug driver you know, step right next to him, take the drink from the guy and drink it all in one go. The poor man start crying. The truck driver just feel a little sorry and say, Hey, hey, come on, man, I was just joking. You've been staring at it for a long time, you didn't drink. So I just want to make a joke with you. i buy you another one, okay? I just don't like a man cry like this. He looks so sissy. Yeah. <laughs> so the the man said, No, no, it's not... Just that. It's not just that. This day is the worst day of my life. First, I overslept and late for my office, and then my boss is very angry and fires me. And when I leave the building to go to my car, I found that it has been stolen. The police say they can do nothing. And I get a cab to return home, and when I leave it, I remember I have left my wallet and credit cards in there. You know, in the in the taxi, the cab driver just drives away. And I went home. I went. I found my wife in bed with the gardener. <laughs> I left home and come to this bar. And just when I was thinking about putting an end to my life, you even you even show up and drink my poison away. <laughs> What a terrible day. <laughs> a man <laughs> went to a bookstore and asked the saleswoman, where's the self-help section? So she said, if I show you this, it wouldn't be the purpose, would it? <laughs> self-help. <laughs> Another man <laughs> goes to the doctor with a strawberry growing out of his head. <laughs> Uh, can you help me, doc? The doctor said, yeah, I have some cream for it. <laughs> <laughs> Why not sugar as well? <laughs> okay, that's it, guy. The rest are bad joke. <laughs> uh, too bad. Really bad. Cannot even read it. <laughs> you know, very... 
crude words, so I can't even replace it. Forget it. Okay, guys? Good? Okay, I'll see you later, huh?